quiet while we do this. Okay, so we've had some questions about what colors should I buy. And here's a nice kit. This is Cotman watercolor that one of you got. And and Cotman is good. It's a student quality paint from Winsor & Newton. Um, and any student quality is good. I wouldn't use like the cheaper ones like, I don't know, Reeves or something like that. They're not quite good enough. Um, but anything where they're using actual pigment names um, so that you get to know what those colors look like mm -hmm. and generally how they behave. Um, and what we, we need, so this is a pretty standard kit what we have here. We've got cadmium yellow, cadmium red, um, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, Prussian blue, Viridian green, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, ivory black, and Chinese white. I generally don't use white. I always wonder why they put those in there. But you could, but generally it's not used. We use the white of the page, right? Now, um, so what we, what we want to do, so these are really standard. We've got our earth pigments, and they're handy, and, um, you know, a few different sorts of blues here. And so what we need is, and, and if you look at your handouts, we have... Um, a section about warm and cool primaries, right? And we see that we need a warm yellow and a cool yellow. So if I look at um, this list, this is really nicely done. Wow, look at that. Wow. So beautiful. So we see here. Ten minutes. <laughs> we see that oh she's got gosh, a lemon machine. yellow, which is a coolish yellow, like kind of a greenish yellow. And then she's got a more warm yellow, gamboge here, right? And so we need two yellows two reds, two blues, and each one of those would be warm and, or cool, right? So that, and the idea, and I can, I will look at this more um, on a, another exercise, but it helps us to see that, oh, if I want to make orange, I want to have an orangey yellow and an orangey red to make orange. Oh, nice. If I want to make um, green, like a clean green, I'm going to want you know, a greenish yellow and a greenish blue. I don't see green in that blue. But it's not a violet mm -hmm. blue, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's a closer to green, mm -hmm. right? And so I can make a nice green. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one reason why we have a kit similar to this. Like this is missing lemon yellow, this mm -hmm. kit, but I do have a warm red and a cool red. So this red is more slightly towards the violet or magenta side, right? And we have a blue oh, here. Magenta? That's alizarin. Okay. So and then I have closer to blue. Yeah. And then I have a, a blue here that's closer to violet that mm -hmm. I could mix with a magenta color to, to make a violet, right? Mm -hmm. So, and these are just really standard pigments that have been around and they are used in many different types of paint. This is a very standard palette. Um, and we have a green here that if we mix it with yellow um, or a bit of orange or something like that, we can make different greens. Don't use it straight. It doesn't look good straight, but you can use it to mix as a base, right? So, so it's a good general kit. I find the more I paint now, the more I want to get away from the usual palette so that the, the colors we've been using in this class, I'm using a lot of transparents now instead of a standard kit like this. And I tend to make my own earth colors instead of buying earth pigments because they're more transparent. And I find that more beautiful. And I learned that from an artist named Jean Doby. There's a really excellent book called Making Colors Sing. I'll show you one, okay? And she really advocates using colors that are transparent and they make the painting just glow. It's beautiful. What does it, what does it mean, transparent colors? So, that's yeah, so and that's what we're going to get to with this exercise. And we can kind of, we can see it. Now this one, it's harder to see because your line is so thin, yeah. right? It was hard to find, you had a hard time finding a, a Sharpie that, that was permanent because this one, and thick enough, this one you found a bled, it's not actually permanent. Now we can see it on, on Johnny's here, too. Put it close so, to the camera. <laughs> pretty close to the camera. Um, I should uh -huh. zoom in because it'll get out of focus if I go too close. I did that at 3 in the morning. You did it, yes. <laughs> did you really? And so we can see, so if we pass this around, you can see oh, his CAD yellow, 
we see it sitting on top of the black line. Okay. We can see the cad red sitting on top of the black line, where the alizarin just looks dark. Mm -hmm. You don't see it sitting oh, yeah. on top. So The blue, too. The phthalo blue was the only other one that I really noticed it's kind of was on top. So you can so see so William blue you can see sitting on top. Yeah. Yeah. So let's pass that around. And then if we look at this one that was done, we can see the yellows we see sitting on top. So that means they're transparent? Nope. No, they're not transparent. They're not transparent. They're opaque. We see them sitting on top, right? Gotcha. So, so if they're on top, they're not transparent. If we see them sitting on top, they're not transparent. They're opaque. So it's from a pigment source that's a particle mm -hmm. that we can't see through. And it's just suspended in the gum arabic and in the water and then just absorbing so onto the page. that this one's transparent? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. So the ones where we don't see the color sitting on top of the black, we just see a darker color. You see this one? That's a stain or a transparent color. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, there's a next step to this. So I asked you guys to do this. So one of what this shows us is, oh, which ones are opaque, which ones are transparent, right? That's what that shows us. Now, there's a next step to find out with this. And I'm going to demonstrate a little bit, and then you can keep going with it, okay? So we want to find out some information about this. So one of the things that's great, too, you get to see all your colors and what they look like. And you get to see which ones are opaque and which ones are more transparent or somewhere in between, right? There's also lists that tell you all of that, too. <laughs> <laughs> but there's nothing like seeing it and yes. knowing it for your particular paints, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I'm going to zoom out here a bit. OK, so what we're going to do now awesome. is a smear test. That ones you can see. So first thing I'm going to do is take a brush and I'm going to run right beside it. And I'm going to find out if any of them have a problem with, um, with being re wet. With, with the, if I paint no. next to it, will it bleed? Oh, look oh. at that. Oh, look at the wow. But then oh, that yeah. other one didn't. Wow. So some of them, if I paint beside an area, it might smear, right? So, and I need to know that. Because, like, for example, oh, look, my sap green kind of smeared a bit, and this uh -huh. particular neutral tint smeared, hmm. right? So you can test out your other ones, see which ones smear. So those would be dyes, that ones that didn't smear? The ones that didn't Dye. smear are dyes yeah. or and stains. Yeah. Transparent. And transparent. Hmm. The ones that, that smear tend to be um, opaque and um, less permanent, tend to spear, tend to pick up more easily. So we have that. So we just to see, does it smear? Now you need to have, when you're doing this test, you don't want the colors on too thick, because if it's just too much paint, and it's not absorbed into the page, it's sitting on the surface anyway, and any color is going to smear. Yes. Well, that's what so, I was going to say, because some have so, much more color. So this one, I think, is just, yeah. there's just too much on there. Yep. Right? So... And I suspect maybe the Oriolan too. What's that pink color there? What is that? That's the, that's opera, the opera I was telling you. Awesome. Oh, Isn't that color. awesome? Yeah. It's hot to talk so to that's yes. if I paint next to it. So for example, sap tends to smear when you paint next to it. And an application of that, I used to do architectural renderings. So in all these things, I usually find out the hard way. So I'd have to paint lawns and sidewalks and things like that, right? So, and if I paint my lawn first and then go to paint my light gray sidewalk, mm -hmm. the green would run oh. in onto my sidewalk. That doesn't look nice. So I'd have to make sure, oh, I have to paint my sidewalks first and the grass last. So that's what that tells me. And, or can I do what we're doing? I'm painting part of it and then painting over and keep going. With some colors, you cannot do that. They're just going to smear. So that's what that tells us. Now, let's find out what happens if I paint over, not beside, but over. So that the first one is it does it run when I paint next to it? Does this smear if I paint over? Like, can I paint over? Whoa. Oh, oh wow. Yes. A lot of them don't stay put. No. Only that one. Does it depend on the thickness wow. of the paint? Yeah, you need mm -hmm. to make sure that when you do this, you've mixed it, it's fluid that it can you know, absorb into the fibers of the page, and it should be on wood, not wood pulp paper. Not, 
this one. No. It should be on no. cotton papers because wood pulp will tend to smear more mm -hmm. anyway because it's not absorbing yeah, anti page as much. Right. This is wood pulp. You know what? I, I Feels think, like it. Yes, but it, but could it, could it be, might be, yeah, or it might be a blend. From, it looks like it's from one. Yeah, of the books. It might be not sure. Yeah, yeah, might be a blend. It was a more expensive book. Okay. Feels like a blend, but I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, it could be a blend. So, um, okay, so, so you see how mm -hmm. some of them smear, but don't make them too thick because any paint, if it's yeah. sitting on the yeah. surface, is going to do that, even if it's a stain. Yeah. So that we can see, we got a few problems here. Especially look at the well, the gamboge. Oh, yeah. The yellows, yellows tend to lift, and you, there are yellows that you can buy uh, a permanent yellow. Um, look at that raw sienna really moved. Burnt sienna the did greens. too. The greens do too, so right? I mean, there's but Viridian nice really didn't. So no. Every one of these paints you have in an individual tube, done. Well, some are done, mm -hmm. some are finished. Oh. So, <laughs> but so I still have them on my palette, but not in a tube anymore. If she goes through this, she's going to find out which one of these smears more than others. So does it run when you paint next to it? Does it smear when you paint over it? Next thing is can we lift it? So does that mean none of these are transparent then because they smeared? Uh, I think you painted a little bit too thick with some of these. Could be, could be because the neutral these. tint and the Payne's gray should stay put better and they look pretty darn thick on there. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, the, the sort of jewel tone colors tend to lift and are usually are opaque. The earth tones are usually opaque and tend to lift. Um, the light greens tend to lift. The darker, more bluish ones tend to stay put. Um, with our blues, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue lift. Uh, cerulean blue will lift, but indigo and Prussian generally don't. You have to remember you're also using student quality paint so they mm -hmm. aren't as permanent as professional series. For example, a lizard crimson right. hue lifts and smears, and it shouldn't because traditional lizard is a case where I want to be able to lift it off. Like what if I'm painting an apple and I want to make it look shiny and I want to lift out a highlight? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want a color I could lift. Or I can put lifting preparation, it's a fluid, underneath first and then paint on top so I can lift off. Hmm. Or use other things like Mr. Clean, Magic eraser, <laughs> or this thing called the incredible nib. But let's check if these come off. So this is, I'm going to put a little dab of color with my brush, and I'm going to see if it lifts easily. And then I'm going to blot it with a Kleenex. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. that lifted off. Right? Yep. Let's see if opera is permanent. So actually, you're going to do your smear on the top, and then you're going to do your lifting at the bottom. Sorry. So that should be done. Here you can do the opposite then. But you yeah. got your letters here, that's why. So we should do the lifting down here. Let's see. It does, ooh, opera yep. is not permanent. Wow, oh, really wow. not permanent. Look wow. at the Kleenex. Mm -hmm. Right? So what about vermilion? Not as bad as the opera, yeah. but yeah. it does yeah. lift. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you can do that. And that'll tell you, if I want to lift off, can I? Or can I not? So let's try one that should be more permanent. Impression. Let's try indigo impression and see what happens. Not too bad so far. It does oh, lift it a little bit, yeah. Hmm. Let's try indigo. Does Depends on how much water you put on too, eh? Uh, so indigo is staying put better than this they Prussian. Dye jeans with it, right? Yeah. Yeah, they dye jeans with it. So it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a dye. But yeah. it bleeds constantly. Yes. For a long time. So when we say it's a dye, does that mean it's synthetic? No, nope, not necessarily. Okay. Like it could be a plant source. Indigo is a plant source. What right? would opera be? <laughs> that would be synthetic. <laughs> so look at how much cerulean oh, lifts wow. compared to the wow. other tubulars. Mm -hmm. Cobalt will lift. Ultramarine lifts a lot. Right, so you see. I love the name of that. Okay, so that's another thing. So it, it helps us plan for what are we going to do. So I want to, let's say I want to paint a sky with cerulean blue and I want to lift off the clouds. I'd rather use cerulean than thalo because thalo is a stain and doesn't lift well, right? If I want to lift off clouds, then maybe I better use cerulean. If I want to do what we're doing today, I better not use cerulean, I better use thalo. And just add, we added indigo to it to make it look a little bit more like cerulean so it's not so bright, right? So, so that these things we can know for planning, whether I want it to lift or I don't want it to lift. 
right? Okay, so that's, and it plus it tells you what you've got in your kit, too. And it's good to know what you've got in your kit and not assume, and I've been caught in a rough way. <laughs> One time I was doing a painting with a color, it was this really intense blue, it was something like, something between these two, it was called Blue Lake, hadn't used it before, but I was doing a rendering where they needed this particular color blue on their building. It's kind of, kind of like this nice blue mm. in here, a bit like Thalo, but, but not the same. And, uh, and I thought, perfect, I'm going to use that for the, the flashing, the trim on the building. And I thought, what a beautiful color. I'm going to put that in the sky, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I didn't know anything about this color. And, and I found I had done my, um, my sky, and it didn't look quite strong enough. So I thought, okay, I'm going to paint it again. So I took my brush, and I wiped across the sky, and oh. like white line across my sky. It lifted immediately. Oh, shoot. And so I'm like, washing it off and starting again. And, and then all of the, and the other thing, I sometimes will paint something first, put masking fluid on top and then paint around it because I found it actually gives me a more crisp image than the way you're supposed to do it, mm -hmm. where you put the masking fluid on first. Um, and then I found that that, it, it didn't, that color didn't like masking fluid on it. Oh, and it all lifted off and went all blotchy. So I had to repaint the sky, I had to repaint all the flashing. And all of this was happening right when a whole bunch of guests were coming into my house <laughs> to, for music night. I'm like, I can't talk to you right now! <laughs> Just put yourself in! <laughs> because with watercolor, you got your one shot, right? And of course, somebody's paying for me, it was almost done, it was oh, due. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot less pressure when no one's paying you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's, even when you buy a new paint, try it out. You know, get to know what is its properties. So you, you, because if you've worked already on a painting and you're adding this new color, and then it does something you're not prepared for. Yeah. But you know, of course, learning the hard way is always the best way to learn. Mm. <laughs> that's, 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 always remember. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. All right, so that's a cool thing, and you guys can work on that on your own. I have a question about the yeah. natural. Yeah. Hearing me going like, is it on? Where's the light? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there we go. All right, so. Um, we have the question of um, if you're using professional grade paints, does that mean none of them lift off? Okay, so if you're using professional grade paint, would none of them lift off? Uh, no. <laughs> they will still lift. So cerulean blue, um, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cad red, any of the cads, uh, sap green, that's the nature of that pigment. Regardless of whether it's a high quality or a lower quality, it will lift because okay. that's what that pigment is like. So pig pigments tend to lift. Some of them smear more than others. Um, now, the, the thing that's different in professional series paints, it's a finer grind, it's a better quality source. There's more pigment, less filler. So a little bit goes a long way. Um, but when it comes to the, the more permanent or the, the stain colors, the sources they're getting them from are the true actual dye source. And so in the dyes or the stains, those ones will stay better. So in the student quality paint, like Lizard and Crimson traditionally shouldn't smear. It does in a student quality paint because it's not actually the real stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what else can we say? So you'll notice that when you buy professional series paints, the ones that are supposed to be permanent stains are more permanent, mm. but the ones that lift still lift. Mm -hmm. And we actually, we get, as painters in watercolor, we get used to that and we plan for that and work around that. So it's not just the color of blue that I want, it's what's the property of that pigment. Mm. It's part of our learning. Mm. There's books and there's charts, like if you get even just those, the watercolor mm. charts, yeah. they'll have a, a lot of that information, especially the professional series ones, has all that information on that free little flyer. And they probably have some downstairs that you could grab. What are they called? It's just a, there's, um, it's a little charts? pamphlet color chart of the paints. And okay. they, they have all that information of how permanent, how light fast, all that stuff. So that can help you plan out. Okay? Yep. So, great. Can you push the button again? So we, the other you know one. Where it was this one. Yeah. That way.